I thought you left for the holidays. I can't stop thinking about it, boss. The letter? I can't get it out of my head. Something about this one just feels different. Different? What are you talking about? Is this about the hotel story again? I just think it could be worth checking out is all. I keep thinking- Didn't I tell you to not waste time with this kind of crap? These people are lonely, Gail. They have nothing better to do. They just want some form of recognition. Even this Ben guy? He doesn't exist. Believe me, this is all hogwash. I've seen it before. I'm just saying, this one feels different. It just doesn't make sense. Lying about something like this, and the letter itself, something about it really stuck with me. What are you really asking me here? I think I'm asking you to trust me. Listen, I'll even bring my own camera. Do you have a title? I'll figure it out. <clears throat> Benjamin's Sin. The Inquirer's Journal, dated January 9th, 1979, by Gail Smith. My arrival seems to be expected. A single room key with a note attached. Someone here has been waiting for me. The hotel's glory days might be long past, but the walls are strangely comforting.
I might have hoped Benjamin would meet me here, but no such luck. Turns out the door to the mystery was right here with this guy worked a normal job, had a normal life. And when that life grew gray and boring, this is where he would come to be completely alone. There is a relationship between the use of marijuana Turns and out he wasn't. eventual use of heroin, apparently. I don't think it's a causal relationship. And this is not the reason why marijuana or cannabis sativa is in our statutes as a dangerous substance or as a narcotic or anything else. It is a dangerous substance all by itself. We have found here in our area that one of the most effective approaches to young people is to... Uh... The kitchen staff going about their day, fulfilling their mundane tasks. Little did they know that someone was keeping an eye on them, waiting for a misstep. Strange place to make a lair, dusty and cramped. I wonder if he watched me from his bed when I arrived. hid in the shadows of his room to drink and sleep his days away. The stench of liquor carries through the vent and becomes an opening for the world to know his terrible secret. Like putting on a mask, Benjamin slipped into the very walls of the hotel. It's like no one ever saw him again, but he was always there. really throw flying, but a joint usually always takes you high, gets you high, and martini you, you just feel a little bit better you don't really get the point where you can't drive a car or anything a lot of doctors they recommend like a glass of wine or a small drink when you come home to relax you but marijuana does a little more than just relax you i think one joint wouldn't 
wouldn't do all that much unless it was pretty powerful. But I think if you just wanted to relax a little bit, that's why a lot of people smoke. Just relax themselves a little bit. I, you know, I don't say if you're disgusted, go home and get stoned, you know. That, that's not the idea. But I think some people drink socially. Two communities' responses to the issues will be presented. Finally, we will see children and adults working together to better understand each other and consider alternatives to drug Teacher in the School of Social Welfare at the University of California at Berkeley. First of all, we live in a drug-ridden or drug-saturated society where people are taught from infancy to use a wide variety of mind-altering drugs. And uh, older people, like many younger people, have conformed to the pressures, the massive advertising and promotion and distribution of certain drugs, the glorification of certain other drugs such as marijuana and LSD by the mass media, politicians and drug policemen. Uh, the uh, desire to find or at least seek escape, relaxation, uh, sometimes feeling with many people uh, essentially not being able to feel anything, uh, a uh, sense of uh, socializing with other people is certainly involved. Benjamin made a whole world inside these walls, and he made sure nobody knew, even though they were all part of it. They had no idea the purpose he found in lying in wait, looking in on all their sad little lives. And what did I feel? I saw the openings, and gladly I looked. This is a story about remorse. This is a story about obsession. Benjamin couldn't live with the weight of his sin. He had seen too much and had nobody to tell it to. I saw what he saw, and it still wasn't enough to shift the blame. But the worst part of it all? I think I understand.
Hey, boss. I have the title. <laughs>